Hey, this is Leighton from Just Collect, and welcome to another video on an amazing vintage basketball collection that we purchased out west in the United States. So this collection started off like many of the other collections that I've had the good fortune to be able to purchase and secure for our company, JustCollect.com. But this one in particular really struck a chord with me because I personally love vintage basketball and not just the cards. I get this lead, it comes in through our appraisal form. This one in particular really stood out because not only did he have vintage basketball, but he rattled off the following sets. 1948 Bowman basketball, 1957 Topps basketball, 1961 Fleer basketball, 1969 Topps basketball, oh and by the way, 1983, and that's right, 1984 star basketball, which features which many people believe is the true rookie card of none other than Michael Jordan. So I get all this information, I start putting in the spreadsheet, I reach out to Daryl, we touch base, and the only graded set he had out of all of his sets was 1948 Bowman basketball. So, because every card was graded, and the George Mikan, the key rookie card in the set, was graded to PSA 5, I told Daryl, I said, listen, you're kind of like on the opposite side of the country where we live. Happy to come out, we have a meeting of the minds, but let's start with something that's commoditized, already graded, and let's be clear, is a fantastic set, the 1948 Bowman basketball set. So what I did was I told him I would value it, I would then tell him what I would pay for it, and we would take it from there. Fast forward, but believe it or not, we weren't necessarily on the same page to start. So I said, Daryl, I really took a lot of time to go through this. Do me a favor. Why don't you check it out and let me know of the 72 cards in the set where the discrepancy or discrepancies may be. And then that way we can hash through it. Lo and behold, he did his homework assignment, came back to me and said, you know, wait, there's actually only a couple cards I had a question about. It turns out we were a lot closer to being on the same page than we thought. He started to bombard me via email with images and information. And so it became apparent fairly quickly that the only way that this deal was going to happen is if I was willing to fly into Seattle, then drive over to Tacoma, Washington, and see the collection in person. I scheduled a approximately 60 hour trip to Seattle, Washington, which is where I flew in, then drove to Tacoma to take a look at the collection. I got in late on a Thursday night, wasn't really worthwhile to kind of start. So we started on a Friday and remember I'm leaving on a Saturday. So there's not a lot of time. So we start going through the collection and you just wouldn't believe how much stuff there is. So I get there. Number one thing I do is to start with the best items in the collection. And that's my advice for anyone out there who is doing this part-time, full-time, anything in between, you need to find out where the bulk of the value is. And the reason being is, there's not an infinite amount of time to spend on all of these deals in people's homes. And so I wanted to make sure that the 1948 Bowman basketball set checked out. The 1957 Topps basketball set, it featured a Bill Russell rookie to PSA 6. You bet your bottom dollar I wanted to see that stat. Like as soon as I got there, it was a fairly well-centered card. Very excited about that. So we methodically moved then into the 61 Fleer basketball set, 69 Topps basketball. Then we started to get into the 80s. But then it seemed like, oh my goodness, all heck was breaking loose. Because once the things that were fairly straightforward were identified, he was kind of all, all over the board. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. What should we do next? But then I kind of reeled it back in. And I said, all right, let's be methodical. What do you have as far as individual either graded or ungraded cards of consequence, meaning of serious value. And there were things like a 1958 Topps Jim Brown rookie in a PSA 6, several Tom Brady Bowman Chrome rookies that were pre-graded by Beckett. I think you're starting to catch a drift. So I explained to him, and then eventually I met his wife on that Friday, how I was handling it. I sat there with both my pad, my laptop, and I was ferociously taking notes. And the reason why I was doing that, he was asking me as I was going through, wait, wait, so you're taking notes and you figure out what everything's worth, like as you go? No, 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 
My advice, unless you're handling three or four or a very small handful of graded cards, log all the information, take the notes, get it on the pad, put it in the computer, then take it back or take a break, go to a coffee shop, start to crunch the numbers. But before I do any of that, I always set expectations for any deal or collection I go to see. So I explained to Daryl, hey, I'm leaving on Saturday afternoon. It looks like we have plenty of time. We're starting now, but, 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 is it okay if we go through all of the cards and memorabilia and things of that nature on Friday, I'll crunch the numbers on Friday night and then I'll come back on Saturday morning. He said, sure, makes sense to me. So as we're starting to really make some progress, I'm getting my notes together. I actually take a break per his suggestion uh, and mine, because it was it was starting to feel that this might be a mountain we may not be able to climb by the time I got to leave. So I started to fill in some rough estimates. And before I went back to the hotel on Friday night, I tried to give Daryl a rough idea of what I thought his collection might be worth. And ultimately what we would pay for it, of course, based on the 1948 Bowman basketball set, which was already accounted for, I explained to him the same type of process that I was going through with the rest of the cards. The part of the collection, believe it or not, that was easiest was probably the most expensive stuff, meaning all the vintage basketball sets I just named. He had some beautiful Peyton Manning rookies that were graded as well as some early signed Peyton Manning inserts and really like lots of fun stuff like that. And believe it or not, that's where we started to get into some trouble. But what I mean by trouble is that there must have been 30 or 40 or 50 5,000 count white boxes. So if you're not familiar with those, one row is a thousand, second row is another thousand. So five rows, 5,000 cards per box. I mean, his fireplace, like you couldn't see the fireplace. It was buried behind all of these 5,000 count boxes. So I start going through them and he's sitting in his like big chair. Like, wait, how are you gonna get through all these boxes? I said, no, let me show you what I'm gonna do. Comes over, I take out a 5,000 count box, start looking through, no. Daryl, it seems to me that this one in particular is so-and-so, meaning it's 2000s football, there's some refractors or some this. And I said, so do you think there's any Tom Brady Bowman Chrome rookies in here? He said, no, probably not. So I said, Daryl, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to give me some assistance going through your collection and trying to figure out which of these boxes are really worth it to dive into so I can try to figure out where the value is. And for the other boxes, to be clear, I said to him, hey, you can either keep them or we can wrap them in the whole deal but I don't think that there's much value in them. So one of the things that was challenging was Daryl made it clear to me, to be fair, even before I came out there, he had vintage and he had modern, and he wanted to sell the whole kit and caboodle at one time. And what was really funny, I remember him saying to me, you know, wait, let's just say we reach a deal. Like you're in a rental car and you're here in Tacoma, you're gonna drop it back off, you're gonna fly from Seattle, how are you going to get all this stuff home to your place in New Jersey? Really good question. So I said, Daryl, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see if we have, you know, the basis of a deal. We start talking numbers before I excuse myself on that Friday. I didn't know if we we're going to reach a deal because he kind of threw his hands up. He's like, you know, I excuse myself. I go talk to my wife. And when I went back on Saturday morning, everyone was waiting for me. The wife, Daryl, the dog even was ready, like at the door for me. And so I went through the spreadsheet right away because I wanted to see if there was going to be a basis for a deal. He was really diligent, very sharp. He would say, Layton, do you have the that 81 Tops football set? I'm like, Daryl, you mean with the BGS 8.5 Montana? Yep, right here on the spreadsheet. And so he was impressed. I started to gain more confidence from him because he saw, even though it was a lot of stuff, I was very, very particular about not only how I went through it, but the notes I took. And he was surprised that I was able to really encompass all of his collection in this spreadsheet. And so things got a little bit more strenuous and difficult as we got to some of these 5,000 count boxes where the value wasn't as well known. So I took a step back and I said, Daryl, do me a favor. Maybe if we're not gonna be close in some of the modern, cause you see I'm paying you really strong on the vintage component of your collection. Maybe we could just buy the vintage cards. He was like this, he was like that. He's like, no, we're not gonna do that. All right, so Daryl, let's get back to the drawing board here. Talk to me. 
Tell me what you think of all of these 5,000 count boxes filled with mainly 2000s and up. Let me know where you think I should look. So as we started to go through it even more closely, I think both me and Daryl both saw the difference between, let's just say one of these 5,000 count boxes I might've put down at 50 or 100 bucks versus like, you know, this box might be $1,500. And I showed him how I valued it. Now keep in mind, the clock is ticking, it's moving, and we're starting to run out of time. So we reached a point where you said, all right, Leighton, let's just say, based on your evaluation and your offer, that we will do a deal. And he didn't say he was accepting it, but he asked me how it would work. It was really funny because I had two pieces of luggage with me. And for a 60 hour trip, that's a lot of luggage. One of my pieces of luggage was a big oversized piece, which I did have to check on the way out and on the way home, was completely empty. That's right, nada, nothing. Zero was in it. And the reason being is I've done this before. It's not my first rodeo. If we reach a deal, this is how it's gonna go down. I'm gonna pay you. We're gonna start packing everything up. The best stuff is going to come with me on a plane. The best of the best stuff went in my little carry-on that I carried with me on the plane now I took my clothes out of my small piece of luggage, I threw it in the big piece, and then I kind of took that next step down in terms of value in the collection. I've got through everything the best I can. I not only show him the numbers, what I think it's worth, I tell him what I will pay. Oh, he was very stoic. So I reminded him, I said, Daryl, it's okay if we don't reach a deal, and if we only reach a deal and part of it, that's also okay. I could tell he very much wanted to sell, as he mentioned, all or nothing. But I was paying him very strongly in the vintage. And if you had to say to me at this point, take a pause, and was I going to get the whole collection, nothing or just the vintage, I would have said either nothing or just the vintage. Because as much as we were on the same page, and the vintage was of course most of the value, physically, I mean, it was encompassing his home. There was a lot of stuff there. so. He countered me, and I think I passed, and he said to me, do you have any room to come up at all? And I gave it a lot of thought. I said, Daryl, you know, I try to shoot for the bullseye because I want to leave it all on the field. In case we don't get it, I don't want to go home crying, you know, and have all this regret. But then my wheels started spinning because the clock is going tick, 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 tick. I'm running out of time. If we buy everything, how am I going to safely get it to FedEx? And so I offered him a little bit more money, but there was a caveat. So Daryl, I will pay you X amount more, but if we reach this deal, this is the way I see it going. I'm going to pack up all the best stuff that will go in my carry-on luggage. I will pack up the next round of it that will go in the luggage I'm going to check on the airplane. And he's going like this, he's like, hey, I still see a lot of stuff left. Appreciated Daryl being lighthearted about it laughing. I said, Daryl, yep, you bet your bottom dollar is. However, Daryl, you can see I'm running out of time. And so if you're willing to help me box up and ship, and he goes, wait a minute, wait a minute. And it was funny because I thought he was thinking about like, hey, the boxing and shipping, is that gonna be a lot of work? He's like, Layton, how do you know what's in there? I said, Daryl, you served our country proudly. You seem like you're a good person. I certainly hope that you will honor your word. And so I don't know that he wanted to do it, but I think he appreciated how candid I was. So I explained to him I couldn't stay longer. I explained to him that I could still buy the vintage, but if you wanted it all out, at the time that we've now reached, I believe we're past the point of me being able to bring it to FedEx. But totally understand if you don't wanna do that. So he thought about it a little bit more and he said he really appreciated not just the way that I was handling him, but apparently, and I, and I am touched by this, he had watched a number of our videos and he was very familiar with not only the way that I told the stories, but also some of the ways that these stories and collections have turned out. And so he got up, we both shook each other's hands with a smile on our face. And that was probably the most important because I didn't want him to be disgruntled. I didn't want his wife coming after me like, oh my God, what happened? And so, what I really appreciated is after we reached a deal, we started to ferociously pack everything up, 
his wife comes home from, I guess, doing the morning errands, and she basically tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm like, oh my God, this deal's about to blow up. I don't know what's gonna happen. She said, I gotta tell you, I never thought, forget about reaching a deal. When you walked in here, I didn't know you. I didn't know that my husband knew you, but you were extremely diligent. You were very hardworking, extremely professional, wonderful attitude. I'm glad that we reached a deal, but most importantly, thank you very much for coming into our home and treating us the way that we would like to be treated. And I said, you know, listen, this is uh, something that I enjoy doing very much. And of course, yes, I do this for profit, but make no mistake, Daryl knew this. <laughs> I appreciate it. He said, Layton, you're a good poker player. This is my advice for any of those that are going to card shows or you're buying collections and you're hitting the road. You have to be willing to walk away. If you're not willing to walk away, then you have no leverage. You're gonna end up putting yourself in tough situations that may be extremely difficult to get out of. So I'm really proud of this deal. And this one in particular, if you think about it, I traveled over a hundred miles an hour for 60 hours in a row to secure one of the best vintage basketball card collections that we've ever bought in Just Collects history. Thanks for tuning into today's video. If you enjoyed our content about the hobby, about the vintage cards that are still out there in these collections and the stories behind it, please make sure you not only like today's video, but subscribe to our channel so that you'll find out each and every time we drop a new video about another amazing collection.